Hi, and welcome to this week's video. I'm Pastor Dave, and uh, it's nice to be with you again this week. You know, the main topic that obviously everybody is talking about is what's taking place in Syria with President Trump deciding to, to uh, launch 49 missiles into Syria at an airstrip and to wipe out um, facilities on the airstrip and so on and so forth. There's all kinds of response to this. Many people are for it. Many people are encouraged by it. Many people are saying, well, we shouldn't be doing that because we should be more of a diplomatic process. And the question is, what's really happening here? And, when, and Syria has been something that's been on my radar for about five years now. If you look at Interpreting the Times, the website which I host, um, there's articles and, and radio shows on there from five or six years ago because I was concerned about Syria actually attacking Israel. And when I said that many years ago, people thought I was crazy. Uh, that wasn't even in the, in the cards. But now today, it is. I mean, in fact, the Golden Heights in the northern part of Israel has been closed several times because of activity between Syria and Israel. You know, President uh, Bassad over in Syria, basically, he's been there since 2000. Before that, his father was the president. So this family has been in charge since 1970. There's 47 years of dictatorship in Syria. And now the civil war that's going on, let me... Let me ask you a question. Do you remember what caused the, the start of the civil war in Syria? It was in March of 2011. Do you remember what started it? See, there were some kids, uh, young kids, teenagers, who graffitied a wall. And, and this graffiti was, was marked as being political. So they were arrested and charged. Well, the parents of these kids and the parents of these teenagers got upset with that and began to protest. And then the parents who were protesting, the adults who were protesting, some of them were shot and killed. And that began the civil war in Syria. It all began with kids and graffiti being marked as political graffiti. And then in March of, of 2011, that took place. In May of 2011, two months later, we put sanctions. America put sanctions on the Syrian president and six other leading senior leaders in Syria. And then in September of 2011, the, the European Union, uh, they barred the import of Syrian oil. And then also in September of 2011, the EU added additional sanctions. And there hasn't been much done since then. And, and then the killing that's taken place over there has just been astronomical. What really got us going this time was the, the, the gas being used on children. But this is not the first time that's taken place in Syria. In 2011, there was over 7,800 of their civilians who were killed. And then in 2012, that number jumped to over almost, almost 50,000 in that one year. And then in 2013, it was over 73,000 that were killed. Civilians, this is not military, these are civilians. And then in 2014, the last time the United Nations kept count, it was over 76,000. So when you add up from 2011 to 14, that's over 206 thousand civilians who were killed in the civil war in Syria. Of that, over 3,500 of them were children. So children being, being killed, being, uh, being caught in this war is not something that's new. It's something that's been happening for years. And what caught my attention is because I, I trust in the Bible and I believe in God's word. See, in Isaiah chapter 17, this is a prophecy from 700 years before the time of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 17, it talks about Damascus. And it says that Damascus would no longer be a city, but would become a heap of ruins. And it says, in that day, now in prophecy and scripture, when it says in that day, it talks about the day that Jesus is about to return. It says, in that day, the glory of Jacob will, fat, will fade away. The fat of Jacob will fade away. You know, when you look at that, what is that meaning? Well, the glory of Jacob, that, that's Israel. And when you look at Damascus, obviously that's Syria. And when it says the fat of, of the glory of Jacob will fade away, that means that there will be an attack on Israel. That's why I've always been concerned about Syria attacking Israel. So are we getting to the point to where that can happen? Israel has a military base up by Mount Carmel in the northern part of the country, and, and they would be able to go in and wipe out Damascus, as Isaiah 17 says is going to happen someday. Now, critics of the Bible and critics of this passage, Isaiah, will say, well, this already happened you know, back in the 700s, 700 years before Christ, when the Assyrians came over, the Assyrians demolished Damascus, but not in the way that this is spoken about because the city continued on. And, and this says that the city will be like a, a, reap, a, a pile of ruins. And it also says that the glory of Jacob, the fat of Jacob, will, will waste away. So Israel will, will, will be hit in this. 
it, it gives us a picture of what the, what the future looks like. And are we going towards war? Are we getting towards Middle East war? Where does this lead to? What happens next? And why is Russia so involved in this? I just did two radio shows on, on this, on why Russia is so involved. Why do they have any skin in the game? You see, Russia wants to control the Middle East. They want to control Europe, and they do that by natural gas. If you remember when Bush was president, they went after a country called Georgia, a small little country called Georgia. Why would you go to war with Georgia? Because they wanted the pipeline for the natural gas. Why are they going against, you know, why are they in war now? Why are they going against other countries and taking over some land? It's because of natural gas. See, Russia can control Europe. And Europe is, is laying back and not really putting much pressure on Russia because Russia controls the natural gas. And if they want to turn the gas off, turn the heat off, they can. It gets cold sometimes doing your, in Europe. And, and if Russia has the ability to turn the gas off, well, Europe's not going to push it. And when you look at why is Russia backing Syria and, and backing the, the supply there, why is Russia supporting what's happening in Syria? You see, the dictator over there, they, he, he had access to almost a half a million troops. Uh, there was 220,000 regular soldiers in the Syrian army, and another 280,000 who were called on reserves. But the problem is, of those half a million soldiers who are either in reserves or on call, 60% of them are Sunni. When you look at the Muslim belief system, the Sunni and the Shiites. Well, the Sunnis, they outnumber the Shiites. And the president of, of Syria is a Shiite, as with Iran, as with Hezbollah. So he was already outnumbered. So the war began in the northern part of Syria and in the, in the eastern part of Syria. There's all kinds of stuff happening in the south where Damascus is in the, in the west area. So when you look at the west and the south part of Syria, that part's not being fought, not being touched, because everything's being done. In, in January of 2015, January 10th actually, the Jerusalem Post did an article, and they quoted a, a magazine in, in Germany. And the mag magazine in Germany was quoting Western Intelligence, which is the United States. And they're saying that Western Intelligence had, had caught communication between a leader in Hezbollah and Iran and Syria. And they were talking about this underground nuclear facility being built in Syria that both North Korea and Iran was helping with. And, and the Jerusalem Post, when they put this article and they published it out, came, kind of gave you a better, better picture of Syria and what's happening there. So you see what the Syrians could be doing. You see what, what could be done in Damascus. If there's nuclear weapons involved, we know there's biological, bi biological and chemical weapons. If there's nuclear weapons involved, well, that's a brand new ballgame. And that brings the passage from Isaiah 17 back into place. And by the way, those who say that that happened you know, many, many years ago when Assyria came over, it, it couldn't be. Because uh, in Isaiah 14, verse 28, Isaiah says this is when he received the prophecy about Damascus. He said he received the prophecy in the year that King Ahaz died. Well, King Ahaz died in 715 B.C., almost 20 years after the Assyrians came over. So Isaiah didn't even get this prophecy until after the Assyrians had come and gone, which means this prophecy is still alive and well. Now, I don't know how much you trust in the Bible, believe in the Bible, but we're seeing that happen right now. If the Jerusalem Post is correct with their quoting the Germany, the source from Germany, which is quoting the source from the from Western intelligence, then there's some nuclear weapons going on in Syria as well. The weapons of mass destruction were all moved over there. Iran is helping them. Hezbollah is helping them. North Korea is helping them. It, it could be an inter interesting time. You know, I just wanted to kind of bring this information up because when you hear about bombs being, you know, missiles being launched into Syria and airstrips being wiped out, I want you to understand the rest of the story and what's happening behind it. I, I think this is just the page one of, of the rest of the book. So the question is how many pages are yet to be written. Anyhow, that's a lot for this week. I hope you kind of enjoyed that and kind of digest that. And if you want to hear more questions or if you want to hear more information or have any questions, you can contact me at the website interpretingthetimes.com that's all one word interpretingthetimes.com hey thank you again for your time this week we'll see you again next week